Hey, hello, and thanks for joining us. In late 2022, Avanti fielded a survey of over 6,500 global executives, office workers, and security professionals to uncover the state of security preparedness and what is keeping these security leaders up at night. More than half of those professionals labeled phishing, ransomware, and other software vulnerabilities as either high or critical threats, and more than half of those respondents likewise rated themselves as very well prepared, ready to deal with the threats. So it's a rosy picture, right? Well, not exactly. We also asked those same security leaders what they'd be willing to wager on the strength of their security protections. And it turns out one in five wouldn't even bet a candy bar on their protection. Hello, I'm Jeff Abbott, and you're listening to Executive Summary, a podcast where we unpack the most interesting research in IT security and everywhere work and what it means for your business strategy. I'm happy today to be joined by Joel Fulton, co-founder of Lucidum and Silicon Valley CISO Investments, which is a leading group of chief information security officers that actually operate as startup investors in the security solution space. Welcome aboard, Joel. Thank you. Really glad to be here. Thanks for having me on, Jeff. Yeah, glad to have you. So look, today, Joel and I are going to be digging in to this interesting paradox. Why would respondents tell us they're well prepared to address these threats, but then at the same time display such a low degree of overall confidence in their security programs? Uh, really interesting. So Joel, when you and I uh, were preparing for this discussion and, and you had a look at the findings from this report, you immediately kind of triggered in on this laundry list of, of threat vectors. And you had a really interesting take that I think gets into the heart of the anxiety we're seeing here. So why don't we start there for a second? So what I thought the most interesting piece of this was that page in the press report. Because I am, I am stating all of these things that could possibly go wrong in the environment. And, and that is not the way security people uh, should, ought to look at their environments. And this was kind of the, uh, the argument that I opened in our conversation. And that is, uh, this reminds me of the mall front karate studio where you ask the student, now I'm going to punch you in this way and you learn this block or parry or evasion. Now I'm going to kick you in this way and you learn this. And you are, you are gauging and preparing yourself for this catalog of incoming threats. But that's not the way uh, a grown-up deals with physical threats. Uh, a grown-up deals with physical threats by understanding what's important, by protecting what's important, by being able to respond when that protection has something happen to it, and then getting things back to normal. And whether the thing that causes you a problem is a flat tire or a mugger or an overdue bill, um, I don't need a list of all the bad things that could happen in order for me to be a diligent security practitioner. And so that's what I thought was very interesting about this. And I think may be why people wouldn't bet a candy bar on the confidence of their statement. And I think well, one of the things I like your take, flip this chart on its head, focus on the basics rather than, than getting caught up in specific tactics. If you build your foundation, you don't have to go chase those threats. So let's, let's, let's pick a, an evil puppy from this list of security threats. So as you mentioned, the highest one here is, is phishing. So <clears throat> phishing exploits my lack of endpoint protection. Phishing exploits my lack of identity management. Phishing exploits my lack of security training, which then is kind of commensurate to the controls around my role. And so if I can deal with role-based control, which interestingly also helps me with uh, ransomware, which is number two on the list, and it also helps me with software vulnerability lateral movement propagation. If I can deal with endpoint protection, well, as I look at the list, that's uh, and for those of you listening, uh, get the report. This is on page 13. If I get my systems protected, well, then... Well, that also helps me with the phishing, and it certainly helps with ransomware. Like ran and it okay. So then, if I get my identities figured out, well, then I'm not worried about. And so, if you if you retreat back to what is it I'm really here to do, 
I'm not here to stop fishing. I'm here to get us healthy. I'm not here to stop ransomware. I'm here to make us prudent. That changes the game. Yeah, agree. And and I, I think your point is spot on. Look, uh, you know, you have talent in your organizations, uh, you better these days, right, on security. And and if you give them the proper tools and, and technical infrastructure, uh, et cetera, you can adequately prepare for these, you know, uh, threat vectors at the top. What's more interesting, Joel, if we hone in, hone in on, and again, you mentioned the chart, I'm looking at it as well. Some of these at the bottom, right, where, where you know, what we see these as is inverted threats. Those where the preparedness is far lower than the the criticality of the threat, ransomware, software vulnerabilities, API related supply chain, right? Uh, let's let's talk about those for a moment. Help help me put those inverted threats in context. Does it does it help security teams to focus their resources there if they can identify those specific preparedness gaps and work to close them? What do you think? Yeah. So um, one of the things, one of the reasons I wanted to do this podcast with you is uh, Ivanti comes from a background of solid IT management. And I have come, so I've come from a background of passion about security. And we too should be mortal enemies because you're constantly trying to make things work and I'm try constantly trying to stop them from working, right? That's kind of the, the security operations paradox. But what I love about this and your and Avanti's background is if you do the things that IT management uh, demand that you do, like what are the key characteristics of SLA and uptime and operational management and change control? Like you do those things, you're giving me on the security side Christmas presents because those things make my life better. And so now with that as context, we've got these, uh, these backward pawns. So I've got ransomware where the inverted threat for the, for the listeners means I perceive my threat is higher than my preparedness. I've got a gap here. And so that is ransomware, software vulnerabilities, API-related vulnerabilities, and, and supply chain. Why am I backwards in all of these areas? I would uh, suggest that the reason is I don't know where these things are. Like the basics of what I do in security, there's only five things. I identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. That's all that I do. Over, that's my plan, do, check, act cycle. And if I fail at identify, ransomware is going to catch me by surprise. Ransomware gets in on unpatched, unprotected systems. I'm not lazy or negligent at my job as a CISO, but if I don't know where to be a CISO, I can't protect it. So I've got a backwards relationship with ransomware. Software vulnerabilities. Uh, I've got scanners. I've got uh, vulnerability identification software. But you know what I can't identify? Who owns that system? What's on that system that I can convey to that owner so they're motivated enough to fix it? So it's the same problem, identify, only now I got a different angle on that same problem. API related vulns, you got shadow IT, people connecting things. I don't know where my, and so you can see the problem isn't that I don't know how to do it. The problem is I don't know where to do it. Yeah, yeah. And we'll look from our customers at Avanti. We hear that challenge all the time. And we also hear the point you're making about the convergence of IT and security. And it's seen as, you know, a must, right? These two, these two are, you've got a CIO and a CISO. And are they uh, working together and aligned? Well, one would hope so, right? And I think the, the threat vectors are now forcing that into a very tight relationship, both from a responsibility perspective and a tools perspective. Interestingly, in the report, Joel, one of the kind of the key stats is only 52% of the respondents reported, to your point, high visibility into users, apps, and devices across their network. So only half have confidence they even understand the realm or the scope of the challenge they're facing. Now, you compare that with the most mature organization. We're talking most mature, right? Those that are four or five star organizations, it jumps up to 83%. But that's still a gap. From 100%, from, you know, having complete visibility of the problem, to your point. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, – so if you're, if you're listening or watching, uh, the most mature 
have 83% confidence that they, they have high visibility. So if, so I'm, I'm working from home because every human in the United States is, uh, if, if I asked you, Jeff, to close your eyes and tell me how many ways in and out of your house there were, you'd be able to tell me. And, and the, one of the reasons that's helpful is if there's a stranger in your house, you know that it's a stranger because you don't live in a mall where strangers are, right? So enterprises at the highest level of maturity, 83% of them say, yeah, we have high confidence. I can count all my doors. And that's a, that's a large problem. And that's why you've got those inverted threats because the, the foundation identify, protect, detect, respond, recover. And, and there's this trite euphemism that says you can't protect what you can't see. It's not really true. You can protect what you can't see. You just can't do it cost efficiently. Yeah. You can, you can write peanut butter your controls on everything, um, but you know your budget cuts are hidden, and you know this year it's a 3% cut, and you know you now have connections to the CIO and the SRE and the DevOps team. They need tools. So you got a moment where you could overspend, but now that moment's passed. Yeah. So that visibility, that identification yields a lot. It's the biggest problem. No doubt. I, I, I think about the point you're making on you know, counting the doors. Yeah, I could do it. Uh, but oh my gosh, you, you, you talk about one of the more uh, stark statistics CISOs and CIOs are facing. Look, um, would you and I have ever dreamed that we'd be doing part of our job with a watch that connects to the network, with a you know, with, with a phone, with a tablet? I mean, it used to be just how many desktops do we have, and are they patched up? <laughs> right now, with everywhere work and with what they call these digital nomads, people who want to work literally all over the place, and, and that means one country to the next, one state to the next, and so on, changing the devices they're using and expecting a seamless experience on and off the network and access to their tools and so on. It just can't be underestimated the challenge this is and, and that it's not going away, right? It's going to continue to accelerate. The upcoming generation of workers, they have that expectation uh, a little farther. They expect to bring their own devices, it's not just yep. any device and you issue it, but they don't expect that, that you're going to issue them a corporate phone. I've got a phone. And so now the breadth of that, um, it's here to stay. And that relationship between IT and security, it's got to become Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid instead of spy versus spy. No doubt. No doubt. Not only do they expect to use their own device, again, they expect it to be a seamless experience to use it. Right. I mean, organizations are now are now measuring the digital experience because this new generation is asking, hey, what can I expect from a network and an IT support perspective? Right. So just a whole different set of challenges and, and what expectations. A fun, what a fun battle, though. What a great because you want to be an attractive workplace. I want the best, the fastest, the smartest, the most eager, the most ambitious. I want those people. And so our job in tech is not to say, yeah, get off my lawn. Around here, we ride horses, right? We gotta, we gotta be ahead so that when they say, and I'd like to, we go, we know. We yep. knew you'd like to, yep. and here it is. Secure, managed, accessible, uniform, seamless, yep. you got it. Yeah. That's really, really important. It is, it is. Well, look, we, we've, we've, <laughs> we've covered a lot of ground in this conversation. <laughs> um, but let's, let's, let's close it out, Joel, by, by kind of going back to the, the fundamentals of the challenges that our, our CISOs and CIOs and their security and IT teams are dealing with in this, again, this preparedness gap uh, that we're seeing. Let, let's talk for a second. And if we had a, a CISO and a CIO in the room and we had to give them, hey, here, here's you know, five things you should think about right now. Let's, let's talk about what those would be. Yeah. Okay. All right. Excellent. So, um, let's start with the little guy. Let's start with the small, medium business. And so that CISO, CIO, uh, the title's probably director of IT, and she's running both things uh, in that size of an environment. <clears throat> I would also suppose in that size of an environment, uh, you're doing everything from manual help desk to fixing the printer, and you've probably got a little bit of outsourced consulting help to handle it. So every day has a, a high tactical rhythm of putting out fires every single day. Uh, the best advice I got, if that's your situation, came from a friend of mine who is ex-Special uh, Forces in England. And he said, when we jumped out of the plane and immediately there was incoming fire, our whole plan had gone to pot. 
Everyone's job was to return fire, except my job. My job was to have what he called a condor moment. That is, like a condor, above the scene, figure out, okay, what's happening? How can we get back on target? And I took that and applied it to myself. And I would suggest if day in, day out is a tactical firefight, you don't have enough people, you don't have enough budget, and every day is a checklist that leaves you feeling exhausted, force a condor moment. The fire's still going to be there. For me, it tended to be Friday at four. Uh, and take time to yourself with no phone and lay out what's the one strategic thing I can accomplish this week. Start fighting for that space to make a long-term change. And when you look at that long-term change, think identify, protect, detect, respond, recover. And often in the beginning, in that firefighting, the number one thing to give you breathing room is to improve the phase change between detect and respond. If you can fix detect respond phase change, now you buy a little time. So now let's go a little bigger, like an enterprise environment. That condor moment is very, very important. You've got teams of directors and VPs that work for you who then are assigning people the tasks that make their lives firefights every day. Your job doing this, in my opinion, is vastly improved by understanding what is the service that we're really providing. What are we really here to do. Old saying, uh, without a vision, the people perish. So your job as the CISO in a large org is to say, we're going this direction. We're going this direction for this period of time. Everything you do needs to line up to this direction. You give them what the military calls commander's intent so they can make decisions at tactical and operational levels that they know line up with you. And if this direction is we're partnering with IT to roll out a digital experience that will change our numbers, improve our hire rates, give better employee satisfaction, and raise our share price, that's a vision. Set that vision and everyone's load will get lighter because they know that you know where you're going. Those would be two examples that I'd give you. Yeah, I like that. I think and, and maybe going back to the study itself and your and your kind of your opening remarks, you know, take the the uh, threat vectors, e evaluate your your readiness, evaluate your solution sets and your tech stack to address. Uh, maybe do your own kind of internal survey amongst the team on preparedness. Uh, similar to the to the study itself, and from that, create a set of priorities to address it. So, to your point about setting that condor moment and and establishing a vision, then get really tactical and and start to think specifically about where where your preparedness uh, may be lacking and and needs to be addressed sooner versus later. I think good practical advice, Joel. Yep. Excellent. Well, Joel, uh, thanks uh, very much. For, uh, for joining me today on Executive Summer. It was a pleasure to speak to you. And, uh, and thanks for all the, the really practical and I can tell heartfelt advice. You can tell you've been in the trenches a while. Still, still a little bleeding of the heart, but thank you, Jeff. This was really delightful. <laughs> oh, very good. Well, listen, if you liked what you heard today, I hope you did. Be sure to subscribe and even better, share, share the, uh, the podcast with a friend. We drop the fourth Wednesday of every month, a new episode, and be glad to have you come back. And check out the show notes for links to the research we talked about today. And you can find out more about Avanti and our solutions at Avanti, I-V-A-N-T-I dot com, or follow us on social media at Go Avanti. I'm your host, Jeff Abbott. I hope you see you next time on Executive Summary. Thank you. Thank you.